a very good morning to all of you my dear students welcome back to the class once again so we were discussing the chapter that is religious path to the divine or you can say the devotional path to the divine and uh, we have discussed about the idea of supreme god who is the supreme who is the ultimate god we have discussed in our previous class and the idea of supreme god can deliver humans from such bondage if approach with devotion or bhakti if we will approach the supreme god if we will try to reach supreme god with great bondage with your heart then only you can have a touch then only you can reach or your prayers can reach to the god gods and goddesses worshiped in different areas came to be known as shiva vishnu and durga these were the gods which were just uh, very popular in those days i am talking about the 6th 7th 9th 8th 9th centuries the idea of bhakti you know that is devotion that became so popular that even buddhists and jains they also adopted these beliefs the believes that there is a supreme god and you will have to create a bondage develop a bondage with the supreme god ek kadi aapko jodna padega apne god ke sath the idea which was accepted by buddhists as well as jains also a page from bhagavad gita is there let me show you Yeah, you can see there is a page from Bhagavad Gita. So and it is written, I think, in Sanskrit language. It is written, yes, of course, it is in Sanskrit language. And uh, there are two people there on the chariot, and something is written, you know, on all the sides of the image. That is a page from the Bhagavad Gita. Can anyone read this page over here? so my dear students i really respect every religion everything is equal every religion says that there is one god and every religion say that we should do good deeds sare religion yahi kehte hain ki hum logo ko acha kaam karna chahiye so i believe on this concept that and you should also that every religion is saying that there only there is one one god one god and we should do good deeds and we will be rewarded for doing our good deeds and we should not try to hurt anyone that is the basic concept of every religion now let us continue to the next slide that is a new kind of bhakti in south india so there was a new kind of bhakti also people previously were just uh, worshiping the gods and goddesses but now uh, in south india during uh, 7th and 8th centuries a uh, new kind of bhakti emerged started and those were known as nayanars and alvars the nayanars were those saint saint matlab aap samajhte hain na sadhu so the nayanars were those saint those who were devoted to shiva god shiva their god shiva so they were just devoted to they used to believe on god shiva those were known as nayanars and there were another group of people or you can say another group of saint who were known as alvars and they were devoted to god vishnu to vishnu and another they were devoted to god shiva nayanars were devoted to shiva and alvas god uh, they were devoted to god vishnu they all came from all caste means from different caste including untouchable even the people who were untouchable they were known as untouchable like the pulayar and the panars the pulayar and the panars were the group of people who were untouchable no one used to touch them you might have all also have observed or seen in the movie the lagan movie there was a man known as kachra who was untouchable in that movie also that was shown 
but the actor convinced other members of the village and now after a few days or after convincing everyone in that movie started embracing and accepting that untouchable so i am talking about 7th century in that century this was prevalent also that untouchable were considered and they were not touched uh, by any other group of the people so even untouchable they were also devoted to this gods like shiva and vishnu god so if someone asks you to name few of the groups who were untouchable during 7 to 9 centuries then they were pulayar and the panars so this nayanas and the alvars included people from all caste included devotees from all different different caste that we will go through separately they preached means now the nayanas the saint ha na sadhu the saints they were preaching they were telling people they were preaching devoted love of shiva or vishnu the nayanas were talking about god shiva and the alvars they were talking about their god vishnu and they were telling the other people they were trying to convince the people the other people other the devotee as they were saying that devoted love of god shiva or vishnu as the path to salvation or mukti or rescue means if you want mukti if you want peace in your mind then you must you know you must devote your life to these gods you know you should worship this god vishnu and shiva yeah so this nayanas and alvars were teaching people telling people that they must uh, devote their life devote their love to these gods then only they can get the rescue or salvation or you can say in hindi they will get mukti they will get peace of mind their life will be very good if they will devote their love to these gods the nayanas and alvars they started going from place to place you know they went from place to place composing fine poems in praise of the deities that is devi devta enshrined or you can say preserved in the villages they visited and they set them to music so the nayanas were going and as well as well as the alvars were going from village to village and whatever god they were finding in that village you know whatever devi devta jo bhi unko wo gaon mein milta tha you know whatever they find which any god they find they what they used to do they start composing good and fine poems you know for what for praising that particular devi or devta they included the name of that particular deity in their poem and they start singing that poem so those compo those poems were composed composed means written by nayanas and alvars and what they used to do they used to set them to music also aur kuch music bhi play karte the wo log so nayanas and alvars taught the people how should they try to Uh, convince the different gods and goddesses devi devtaon ko kaise unko khush karna hai ye kaun sikhane lage logo ko those saints wo sadhu log those who were from nayanars and alvars group they started teaching the people they they were just visiting the villages and the villagers were always having some god and goddesses in their village और विलेजर्स के पास पहले से ही कोई देवी देवता का उनके पास कंसेप्ट होता था दे वर हैविंग सम कंसेप्ट ऑफ डाइटीज द विलेजर्स एंड व्हाट दिस नायनार्स वर डूइंग दे वर ट्राइंग टू कंपोज द पोएम्स इन फेवर ऑफ है ना फॉर प्रेजिंग दैट पर्टिकुलर डाइटी एंड व्हाटएवर दे वर हैविंग इन दैट विलेज हुस हुएवर एंड दे सेट देम टू म्यूजिक आल्सो so people started liking this nayanas and alvar saints you know because they 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 have seen that these uh, these saints have come to our village and they are praising my deity you know my devi devta so they all started liking these people nayanas and magis uh, nayanas and alvars were liked by the people <laughs> and even the kings of that time king and queens of that time they also started liking and the kola and the you can see the chola and the pandya kings built elaborate temples means very big temples 
around many of the shrines means that holy places visited by the saint poets saint poets and it means this nayanars and their alvars they developed into saint poets and they started writing poems so they became the poet and they were saint also so that's why they are known as saint poet so wherever the saint poet were visiting the king like the chola and the pandya kings they started uh building very big temples in those places strengthening the links between the bhakti tradition and temple worship and what they were doing they were just linking to these things you know these two things number one the bhakti tradition that is the way of worshiping the almighty and they started uh, worshiping the different gods and goddesses or deities in their uh, temple also so the worshiping the deity in the temple started elaborating or started and you know, getting uh, familiar or popular from 7 to 9 centuries you know, the because of the uh, building of erecting of this elaborate temples as well hagiographies or by other name it is known as religious biographies of the alvars and the nayanas were also composed so different people started writing about the saints also about their life about the life of those saint who belong to the group of nayanas and alvars so many people started writing this the biography of those people of those saint which is also known as hagiographies and which are the sources for writing histories of the bhakti tradition and by understanding by getting the concept by getting the knowledge of the life style or about the life of those said we came to know you know we have come to know about the bhakti about the tradition which were being followed uh, in those time in those uh, centuries 7 to 9 centuries so we have got we have got a lot of knowledge and whatever we are reading right now we are discussing right now we are getting this knowledge from the hagiographies from the religious biographies of those alvars and nayanars i can help you to see a bronze image of manika vasagar let us see let me show you he is also one of the sent and you can see a bronze image of manika vasagar he is also one of the sent uh, you can see it uh, closely also okay so people started you know constructing their Uh, constructing their images, you know, uh, with the help of bronze, someone using maybe silver also, maybe gold also. And here is one of the composition from Manika Vasagar. Composition means what he has composed, you know. Manika Vasagar ne kya bataya hai? Chale lek, ham log dekhte hain. Let us see. It is a poem, you know, written by Manika Vasagar. He is saying, "Into my vile body of flesh." He is saying that his body is made of a flesh, and our body is made of a flesh. And he is saying about his body, his body is nothing. He is saying vile means nothing. His body is not important. Into my vile body of flesh, you came as though it were a temple of gold. And he is saying about the, he is praising about the god or the or the deity. He is saying, "You deity, when you came into my body." as though it were a temple of gold and i was feeling that i have entered into a temple of gold and soothed me holy and saved me He's saying about the god that you have saved me and i really believe on you he saying again oh lord oh grace oh gem most pure he saying the god that you are so graceful you are so kind you are gem for me you are diamond for me and you are so pure he is telling he is trying to praise and manika vasagar is trying to praise the deity or the god and again he is saying that you are pure he is saying sorrow and birth and death and illusion you took from me and set me free means he is saying that now i don't uh, 
have worries i don't worry about the sorrow and about the birth and about the death and about the illusion illusion that is maya right? so i don't think anything about this world i am i am out of this sorrow na mujhe koi gham hai ano na mujhe paida hone ka ya marne ka dar hai i don't have the sorrow i don't have the birth and death and even illusion you took all from me and set me free now i am free he is telling about himself manika sawar is telling about himself that because of you and you have set me free from all this worriness oh bliss oh light i have taken refuge in you He's saying that now i believe fully on you i depend on you and never i can be parted from you and i will never be separated from you means i will never forget forget you i will be always remembering you because you are inside me he is telling the manika sawar he is telling to the to his almighty you know oh please oh light i have taken refuge i have made a house in you means i am with uh, you are within me i am within you and i will never be parted from you this is this type of this type of poems were composed you know by the alvars and the nayanars and by those sent in those time and which was liked by many people all the devotees in and even they started setting them to music also aur wo log inko ga kar bhi batate the they used to sing all this type of poems also so my dear students composition of manika va sagar yeah, let me show you uh, is there any more composition yeah that we have got through this composition and i have shown you the image of manika va sagar also and here is another you know, that's into my vile body of flesh that we have already discussed you know? sorrow and but It is uh, there. I I have translated also in many of the meanings. You can see into my vile, evil, any grinded body of flesh. He he does not depend on his body. Saying you know, you came as it were a temple of gold and soothed me. And मुझे शांत किया आपने and saved me. Oh Lord, oh grace, oh chain, most pure sorrow and birth and death and illusion, illusion. मैंने माया, मो माया. यानी people are running, है ना for the money right now we in these days people are running for the money in this people are uh, always trying to build their houses you know have a good life have a charm life so he's saying manika sawa that you have set me oh almighty you have set me free from all these things oh bliss bliss means what param sukh oh light prakashmay i have taken refuge in you means i have i started living in you i believe in you and never i can be parted from you he said now let us see and go through about the nayanars and alvars there were 63 nayanars in those days who belonged to different caste backgrounds such as potters untouchable even workers peasants hunters soldiers brahmans and even the chiefs means 63 nayanars they belong to different different uh, places even from different field also you can say some of them were potters those who used to make pots some of them were workers peasants hunters soldiers brahmans and even some of the chief of the king also they were almost 63 nayanars then the best known among them among those nayanars there were there are new few names and right? those who were best known were appar sambandar sundarar and manika va sagar and right? these were the saints who were very famous in those days and there are two set of compilations of their songs means they have compiled two different type of songs and those compilations are known as Tevaram and Tiruvakkam. These are the name of the. Uh, you can say nowadays we are having uh, different songs in albums also. So these are the name of the albums. Huh, na? These are the set of al compil compilations of their song. So these those two albums name were Tevaram and Tiruvakkam. These were the name of the. albums or you can say the compilations of their songs were uh, noted down written down in these two albums there were 12 alvars so we have gone through that there were 63 nayanars nayanars were very very 
much you can uh, you can see over here they were good in quantity but only there were 12 alwars those who came from equally divergent backgrounds even they were from different different backgrounds divergent means you know different background various backgrounds the best known among them were peri yalwar his daughter and dal tondara dipoddi alwar and namwalwar and namalwar so these were the 12 alwars and most of them uh, many of them were famous and these are the name of the famous alwars means the famous saint of that time and they were also composing the poem like nayanars nayanars they composed poem in two books in two albums devaram and tiruvakkam and alwars they also composed poems and songs and their songs were compiled or recorded in a album known as divya prabandham so this was the name of the album or you can say the compilation of the songs and uh, by alwars known as divya prabandham so try to remember my dear students number of nayanars and number of alwars and nayanars they used to worship which god can anyone tell me yes right you you tell me right the nayanars they worshiped which lord you can see over here in the screen the nayanars they were devoted to shiva so you can try to remember with the word n equal to nayanar s equal to shiva n equal to s if you will try to remember like this n equal to s means nayanars equal to shiva lord shiva and alwars equal to they were worshiping vishnu so a equal to v then it will be very helpful for you to remember in your exam also n equal to s and a equal to v like this if you will try to remember then you will never forget philosophy and bhakti that is the next topic that we have to go go through philosopher sankara born in kerala in the 8th century was an advocate of advaita so we are talking about a philosopher who is saying who born in kerala and he was promoting he was convincing others regarding the principle advocate you know of advaita he was trying to convince the people about advaita that is the policy doctrine policy of the oneness of the individual soul and the supreme god which is the ultimate reality what he was saying that uh, about the oneness of the individual soul and the supreme god means you or we have to have to include or you can say have to bond create one bondage with the supreme god means god and your soul there should no one there should be no one in between that between you and your almighty so he is trying philosopher sankara is trying to advocate he was trying to say about advaita he was saying that there should not be anyone between your soul and the supreme god means your soul and your supreme god should be one there should be no one in between that and that is the thing he was saying about oneness oneness yani ek hona chahiye aapka soul aur aapke supreme god ke beech mein koi nahi aana chahiye and that is the ultimate reality he is saying that that is the uh, the most believed truth of the life he is saying yahi kya hai sachai ye sabse bada sach yahi hai that is the ultimate reality he is saying and let me click on the link advaita there is something there in that link Let us see. In Hindi, it is written, "Jiske anusar, na jivatma aur paramatma, jo param satt hai, dono ek hi hai." He is saying that our soul and uh, he is saying that our soul, na our atma and paramatma, atma aur paramatma kya hai? Wo kya kehte hain ki dono hi ek hain. Unhone ye shiksha di ki Brahma jo ek matr ya param satt hai. वो निगुण और निराकार हैं निराकार 
मीन उनके उनका कोई आकार नहीं होता निराकार का मतलब क्या है कि उनका कोई आकार नहीं होता द अलमाइटी हैज डू नॉट हैव एनी शेप दैट इज टोल्ड बाय फिलोसफर संकरा जो एक मात्र ही परम सत्य है एंड निर्गुण है शंकर ने हमारे चारों ओर के संसार को मिथ्य या माया माना और संसार का परित्याग करने अर्थात संन्यास लेने और ब्रह्मा की सहसकृति को समझने और मोक्ष प्राप्त करने के लिए ज्ञान के मार्ग को अपनाने का उद्देश्य दिया सो वी विल गो थ्रू लेटर ऑन अबाउट वॉट ही सेड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल से अबाउट दैट जीवात्मा एंड परमात्मा दोनों एक ही है That your soul and Almighty is same. There is no one in between that. Shankara taught that Brahman, the only or ultimate reality, saying that the Brahmans are the only ultimate reality in this world, and was formless. He's saying Shankara is saying that there is no form of that particular God. There is no form of God, and without any attributes, even God does not have any attributes. No hands, no legs, you know, no uh, five hands, ten hands, no legs, no head. So God has no image, no form. Formless. He is saying that the Brahman is the ultimate reality, the supreme God is the ultimate reality, and the supreme God is formless. He is saying Sankara that uh, that the God has no form. Now his. कोई स्टैचू होता है द गॉड हैज नो इमेज ऑल्सो नो स्टैचू ऑल्सो एंड इवन नथिंग गॉड इज जस्ट फॉर्मलेस सेइंग एंड विदाउट एनी एट्रीब्यूट और गॉड का कोई एट्रीब्यूट भी नहीं होता Shankara considered the world around around us to be an illusion or Maya. Shankara is saying that ये जो दुनिया है वो क्या है Maya है. This world is illusion, and he started preaching renunciation, that is sannyas of the world, and saying that we must take this renunciation, accept renunciation. हम लोगों को sannyas ले लेना चाहिए. We should leave all the the parents the families the wife the husband we should leave or leave them all and we should adopt the path of knowledge to understand the true nature of brahman and attain salvation aur tabhi hum logon ko kya milega we will get what we will get salvation mox we will get rescue from the almighty we will have to adopt the path of knowledge hum logon ko is raste pe chalna hoga we will have to leave this world because this world is what maya illusion Ramanuja who was also a, a great philosopher in Tamil Nadu he born in the 11th century but we will discuss about him in our next class because the time is running out that is all in this class my dear students stay at home and stay safe